In this lecture, we're going to learn about the important concepts of poles and zeros. Now, it turns out the most useful and important types of Z-transforms are those which are described by rational functions. That is, where the Z-transform X of Z is a ratio of polynomials, P of Z divided by Q of Z. Now, we define the zeros of X of Z as the values of Z for when X of Z is equal to zero. Those are called zeros. The poles are the values of z for which x of z equals infinity. You can see that the roots of p of z, the places where p of z equals zero, those are going to result in x of z also being zero. So the roots of p of z are zeros of x of z, and we'll denote those in our z-plane plots with a little circle. On the other hand, whenever q of z goes to zero, x of z is going to blow up. So the roots of q of z are the poles of x of z, and we'll have those denoted in our z-plane by a little x. Now it turns out you can also have poles or zeros at z equals infinity when the order of q of z is not equal to the order of p of z, and that's something we'll look at the end of this lecture. Let's take some examples. So we've seen before that if x of n has is alpha to the n u of n, then the z-transform x of z is z divided by z minus alpha, where the magnitude of z has to be greater than the magnitude of alpha for this z-transform to converge. So this is a rational function. We've got a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator, and the roots of the numerator polynomial occur at z equals zero. The roots of the denominator polynomial occur at z equals alpha, so we have a zero at z equals zero and a pole at z equals alpha. And we can sketch that in the z-plane by putting a circle for the zero and an x for the pole at location alpha. And of course, the region of convergence is outside of a circle whose radius is alpha. So the pole will lie on that circle. On the other hand, if we consider the anti-causal version of alpha to the n, and look at x of n equals negative alpha to the n u of minus n minus 1. Again, that has the same z transform. x of z is z over z minus alpha, but in this case, the region of convergence is all value of z interior to the circle with radius alpha. So as before, we have a 0 at z equals 0, pole at z equals alpha, and we get a z-plane plot that looks like this, where in this case, the region of convergence is inside of a circle corresponding to the radius of the pole. So for a third example, we're going to take a sum of geometric series, and we'll look at 1 fourth to the n u of n plus the quantity minus 1 half to the n u of n. We know that 1 fourth to the n u of n has z transform z divided by z minus a fourth. This holds for the magnitude of z greater than 1 fourth, and then the second term has z transform z over z plus one half, and the region of convergence for this one is the magnitude of z greater than one half. And so when I combine these two, the z transform has a region of convergence, the magnitude of z greater than a half, because it has to be the region of z that's appropriate for both of these terms. Well, I can do some algebra to combine these and putting them over a common denominator. And you'll notice that I didn't multiply out the denominator because we're interested in the poles and zeros. And having this factored is more useful to us. Continuing our algebra, we end up with combining the numerator terms. We get 2z squared plus 1 fourth z. And then we can factor that as 2z times the quantity z plus 1 eighth. And these, again, hold for the magnitude of z greater than 1 half. You see from looking at the numerator that we have zeros when the numerator has roots, which correspond to z equals zero and z equals minus one eighth. Poles are when the denominator has roots, and this is already factored, so we have z equals one fourth and z equals minus one half are the poles. We can sketch those in a z plane plot showing the pole at one quarter here and minus a half then the two zeros at minus an eighth and at the origin. The region of convergence is the part of the z-plane that has radius greater than one-half. Well, I can consider another version of this signal where I 
take the second term and I replace it with the anti-causal version of the geometric sequence. So I've got 1 fourth to the n u of n, which is the same as the previous example. But now I have minus the quantity minus 1 half to the n u of negative n minus 1. And the z transform in this case had, takes the same form. We have z over z minus a quarter, z over z plus a half. And in this case, we know that the first term converges when the magnitude of z is greater than 1 quarter. But the second term converges when the magnitude of z is less than a half. So our region of convergence becomes the magnitude of z between 1 fourth and 1 half. Well, this algebraic expression is the same as the previous example, so we can reuse that algebra. And we had that x of z was 2z times the quantity z plus 1 eighth divided by quantity z minus a fourth times the quantity z plus a half. And so the zeros and poles are identical to what we had before in the previous example. The only difference is now the region of convergence is this ring that's located between the poles. Okay, so the radius is between one fourth and one half. So for our fifth example, we're going to consider a finite duration signal, and it'll be x of n is equal to alpha raised to the nth power, and that's on the range of lowercase n between zero and cap n minus one, and then we'll assume it's zero otherwise. So to calculate the z-transform, we haven't done this one before, we will use the definition, the sum n equals minus infinity, x of n, z to the minus n. And substituting in for x of n, we find that our sum only goes from n equals 0 to cap n minus 1. And we can write alpha to the n, z to the minus n, as alpha z inverse to the n. And this is just a finite geometric series. And that has a closed form expression, which we can either remember or look up. And it's 1 minus alpha z inverse to the capital nth power divided by 1 minus alpha z inverse. So we're going to factor out z inverse to the nth power from the numerator and z inverse from the denominator. And we can write this as z to the n minus alpha to the n divided by z to the capital N minus 1 times the quantity z minus alpha. And now we have a ratio of polynomials in z, so we can proceed to try and find the poles and zeros. But before we do that, we want to ask where the region of convergence is located here. Remember, for the region of convergence, this, the series that we're summing has to be absolutely summable. So if we take the sum from n equals 0 to cap n minus 1 of the magnitude of alpha z inverse raised to the nth power and ask when is that less than infinity. Well, as long as alpha is less than infinity and z is not equal to 0, we're going to have a finite value for this sum. So the region of convergence is the entire z-plane except for the point z equals 0. So the zeros of our z-transform are going to be the roots of the numerator, and those roots occur when z raised to the nth power is equal to alpha to the n. And this implies that we have multiple roots. This is a capital N order polynomial, so it should have capital N roots. And indeed, those are given by z sub k equal alpha e to the j 2 pi over n times k. And k is going to go from 0 1, 2, up to n minus 1. So this term here, this is the nth root of unity. So we have indeed capital N zeros. Now the poles, well you see that we have z equals 0 is a pole, and there's actually n minus 1 of those. And then z equals alpha would also appear to be a pole. What you notice is that the pole at z equals alpha is identical to a zero at z equals alpha, which occurs when k is equal to zero. So this pole is going to cancel out the zero. In other words, we could do division here and cancel this term and cancel part of this term. Of course, this would be a much more complicated looking expression and because we'd have to do long division. So we're not going to actually do that. But we notice that thus the zero and the pole cancel and therefore this particular pole does not exist.
So we have a total of n minus 1 zeros associated with zk equals alpha e to the j 2 pi over n times k for k equals 1, 2, up to n minus 1. And then we also have n minus 1 poles at z equals 0. We can sketch this in the z plane and we have a pole of multiplicity n minus 1 and that's what's indicated here by the n minus 1 next to the pole that this is a higher order pole and then the zeros are spaced around the unit circle at intervals of 2 pi over n and the radius of those zeros is located at alpha and the region of convergence is the entire z-plane except for z equals zero. We're going to conclude with some examples of poles and zeros being located at z equals infinity. Let's suppose we have a z-transform x of z that's given by z plus 1 over z plus 2 times z minus 1. Well, you say, what are the roots of the numerator polynomial? They are at z equals minus 1. So there's a zero at z equals minus 1. And the denominator polynomial has two roots. It has a pole at z equals minus 2 and then another one at 1. However, if we consider the limit as z approaches infinity of x of z, what's going to happen is we have a term in z in the numerator and a term in z squared in the denominator. So as z gets really big, it's going to behave like 1 over z. And as z goes to infinity, 1 over z is going to go to 0. So it turns out that z equals infinity is also a 0 of this particular z transform, even though it's not apparent just as a root of the numerator polynomial. So if we consider a second example where we have x of z the inverse of this function, that is we have z plus 2 times the quantity z minus 1 divided by z plus 1, we would say that there's zeros where the numerator polynomial goes to zero, and that's going to be at z equals minus 2 and 1. And then there's a pole at z equals minus 1. But in this case, if we consider the limit as z goes to infinity of x of z, well, now when z gets big, we have z squared in the numerator and we have z in the denominator. So this is going to behave as z does. So the limit as z approaches infinity of z is infinity. Okay, that's the definition for a pole, is that x of z blows up. So it turns out that z equals infinity is a pole of this system in addition to the pole at z equals minus 1. We can make a more general statement about our observations from these two examples. And that is, if we have this rational function p of z over q of z, and the order of the numerator polynomial is capital M, but the order of the denominator polynomial is capital N, then there's two possibilities. If N is greater than M, then it turns out that we'll have N minus M zeros at Z equals infinity. On the other hand, if the order of the numerator polynomial is greater than the denominator polynomial, then there'll be M minus N poles at Z equals infinity. Poles and zeros at z equals infinity are of consequence in certain situations when we look at properties of the system, and we'll do that in a future lecture.